special. Knoxville, did I get that right? Traditional. Okay. Irish traditional? Traditional Irish. Oh, traditional Irish. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a great Irish organization in Knoxville that promotes music. <laughs> We'd love to start with a couple of jigs uh, that uh, our dear friend, late friend Dennis Cahill, a uh, great musician who passed away last year, used to play all the time, and they were called the um, Teller I Am, the Battering Ram, and also the uh, Gallagher's Frolics. So thanks very much. Are we ready there, Mr. Broders? Thank <laughs> you. 
thanks very much. Uh, we're going to carry on with a song that was written by um, a man called Dominic Bean, who was uh, Brendan Bean's brother, if anybody's ever heard of Brendan Bean, the playwright. Um, it's a song called Building Up and Tearing England Down, and it's, uh, it's a song that was written about the, uh, the navvies or the, the uh, construction workers who went to England after World War II to rebuild England, and uh, basically pointing out the... Uh, the working conditions that they had to deal with, or the lack of, I suppose you could say. Right. I won the hero's name with MacAlpine and Costain, with Fitzpatrick, Murphy, Ash and Whippy's gang. I've been often on the road, on me way to draw the dough, when there's nothing left to do for Johnny Lang. I used to think that God made the mixer picking hot That Paddy might now hell above the ground I've had gangers big and tough Tell me tear it all out rough When you're building up and tearing England down In a tunnel on the ground A young Limerick man was found He was built into the new Victoria line when the bonus gang had passed, sticking through the concrete past, was the face of a little Charlie Joe Divine. Well, the ganger man the gork, well, Big Paddy ain't the work. When a gas main burst and he flew off the ground. Well, they say he said, don't slack, I'll not be here until I'm back. Keep on building up and tearing England down. I was on the hydro dam the day the Jack McCann got the better of his stammer in the week. He fell from that shut up and jam, and that poor old stuttered man, he was never ever more inclined to speak. Well, I saw Boz McCall from the big flyover fall into a concrete mixer spinning round. Now it was not his intent He got a fine head of cement He was building up and tearing England down I remember Carrier Jack with his hat upon his back How he swore he'd one day set the world on fire But his face we've never seen since his shovel it cut clean Through the middle of a big high tension wire No more like Robin Hood will he roam through Cricklewood Or dance around the pubs in Camden Town I would let no man complain, no Pat can die in vain, when he's building up and tearing England down. So come all you navvies bold, who think that English gold is just waiting to be taken from each sod. Are the likes of you and me could ever get to know be ye, or the night would far good service to the hard. They've the concrete master race to keep you in your place and a ganger man to kick you to the ground. If you ever try to take part of what the bosses make when you're building up and tearing England down. If you ever try to take part of what the bosses make when you're building up and tearing England down.
Thank you very much. This is Bahola with us here today on The Big Play. We're live from Barley's today. So, man, um, whew, that, was, that was some fancy play in there. You know, it's funny. We usually don't finish throwing up at this point. It's so early. But, you know. I'm there, it is. Oh, yes, you did. Um, so, well, you know, and we were also talking... Uh, before the show about, you know, how long this set was going to go and stuff. And I think the, uh, the original time thought was 20 minutes and we'd be done already by this point with two <laughs> yeah. songs if that were the case. So luckily we didn't go with that plan, y'all. So um, I w just a little quick, just to clue people in, Jimmy, um, I read you were originally uh, born in... London, two through, no Irish, fault, through no fault of my own, yes. Two, two <laughs> Irish parents. Correct. Yeah, my father was from Connemara, my mother was from Kerry. All right. And um, did did you grow up in England or did you grow no, up in Ireland? No, we moved back to Ireland shortly after I was born, and then okay. a couple of years later we moved to Chicago and stayed there since 1965. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you know, well, according to what I've read. I'm a Yank. Well, no, that's not where I was going. Not a Yankee. A Yankee. I was going to say more like the man in <laughs> traditional Irish music was where I was going there. Um, your, your family, were they instrumental in you becoming musical? Um, no one in my, actually, all my family was singers, and they sang uh, traditional songs in Irish and in English. They were both, my, both my parents were Irish speakers originally, and then they learned English as a second language. And Jimmy's still deciding what language he has. <laughs> <laughs> Since I can't say the seven words. It's, so yeah. It's kind of there in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty good at those seven words, actually, from yeah. what I hear, actually, you know. But anyway, we're not going to go there today. Why accordion? How did it come? I think my mom dropped me on my head, and then <laughs> I see... No, no. You know, I wanted to... We had a great accordion player next door to us by the name of Joe Cooley from Peterswell in County, uh, County Galway. And he, was, he lived right across the, the apartment from us. And when my mom said, do you want to play the accordion? And she, I said, yes, but I want to play the piano accordion. So I don't know. It's, it's an oddity within Irish music, at least at the time it was. It's more popular now than it was before. Right, yeah. They're mm -hmm. more like a squeeze box kind of traditional. Oh, yeah, the, the button accordion would be more, it's like the, similar to what they use in Cajun music. Yeah. One row or two rows, yeah. So. This is more, this is more of the Lawrence Welk variety. <laughs> Or Myron Florn. <laughs> you got a, a lot of Lawrence Welk fans in here. <laughs> um, so how'd you meet Pat? Where'd Pat come from? Where'd you come from, did Pat? You, did you meet Pat in Chicago, or did you all meet in Ireland? Where did it No, we met in Chicago, happen? yeah. I'd never heard of Jimmy Kane. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't like piano accordions, so I don't know. <laughs> No, we met, I came to Chicago in uh, 1990, so last century, and uh, I was, uh, I don't know where we met, actually. Southside. Well, yeah, but like, I don't know, was, was, was it at one of the sessions? Yeah, session or a gig. Yeah. yeah, session or a gig, so it just sort of happened from there. So, 
what's the community like, the Irish community, arts community in Chicago? I mean, is it hard to find the, uh, folks to uh, no. jam with, or is it No, it's, qu it's quite easy. It's a big city, so it's, it's this... Um, I came from Dublin, so w w when I was... Um, I left Dublin when I was 26, so I spent my informative years <laughs> in Dublin. And at that time, that would have been the late 70s, early 80s, and Dublin was this small really big scene at the time, but it was very accessible. So you could walk, you could throw a stone and hit a, a gig or a session really in Dublin at the time. And the gigs you could hit would be like the, the uh, sort of thing like Matt Malloy and Paul Brady be playing somewhere down the street. Christy Moore would be playing down the street. Stockton's Wing, Frankie Gavin, they were all in and around that part. And it was a very, um, very exciting time. It was very economically depressed. So the only thing you could do was go to gigs. Really. You might not get paid, but you could go. Yeah, the I money wasn't great, but I mean, the, the music was obviously outstanding because it's still being played. Uh, the records that were made back then are still, like, I don't think they've been surpassed. But anyway, so when I came to Chicago, um, it's such a bigger city. But still, the Irish community had one, the Abbey was the, was the big spot in, in Chicago. Everybody that came to Chicago went to the Abbey, or you were told by somebody in Dublin, I was, to go, just go to the Abbey. And when I went to the Abbey, I met Liz Carroll, Pauline, and yourself, and John, and everybody else. So. And then you felt homish. Not really, no. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. I, I've, I've lived there over 30 years now, so. Well, speaking of sessions and gigs, as we have been mentioning this evening, or this afternoon, the traditional Irish arts of Knoxville presents uh, Bahola tonight at the Old City Performing Arts Center. Y'all, that's a block away from Ooh. right here, wow. just right up the street. You can stay here all day and crawl up there yep. if you want <laughs> later, you know, it's okay. It's all cool. Um, tickets are available online for the show. They'll also be available at the door. Um, there is a, um, a link from Jimmy Keen, K E A N E dot com, for the tickets there, as well as from the uh, uh, traditional Irish arts of Knoxville web website, as well. Tradnox.org, y'all. Oh, it's a dot com. All right. There's lots of them here you can talk to if you like to after, after the show. Um, and um, the band has merch available over there at the merch table afterwards as well. As usual, we have our love bucket set up here in the front. If you'd like to show a little love to the band, feel free to slide it on in there. You can shake and howdy with them afterwards and thank them for being here with us. But for now, I'm going to slide on out of the way, y'all. This is Bahola on the Big Plate live from Barley's. Thank you, Red. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're going to do a, another song that uh, I have on a CD over there. Um, it's a song called John Kelly, The Boy From Clan. My father used to sing this song, so it, uh, it, it, it was with me for a long time before I decided to record it. Anyway, dates from the, it was written in the 1800s, but it's uh, about the 1798 rebellion in Wexford and uh, John Kelly. What's the news? What's the news? Oh, my evil show, my leers. With your long barrel guns from the sea. What wind from the south brings a messenger here with the hymn of the dawn of the free? Goodly news, goodly news, do I bring you the fourth? Goodly news, shall you hear, Bargy man? For the boys march at dawn from the north to the south, led by Kelly, the boy from Calan.
Tell me who is the joint at the head of your band? The one with the gold curling hair. Seven feet is his height with some inches to spare. And he looks like a king in command. Oh, me boys, that's the pride of the bold Shelmaleers. Monk's greatest of heroes a man. Fling your beavers a laugh, give three ringing cheers for John Kelly, the boy from Calan. Enniscorty's in flames, old Wexford is won. And tomorrow the barrow we will cross On a hill or the town they have planted a gun That will batter the gateway to Ross All the fourth men and bargy men will march o'er the heath With brave Harvey to lead in the van but the foremost of all in that grim gap of death will be Kelly, the boy from Kalan. But the gold sun of freedom grew darkened at Ross, and it set by the Slaney's red waves. And poor Wexford, stripped naked, hung high on a cross, with her heart pierced by traitors and slaves. Glory, oh, glory, oh, to her brave sons who died. For the cause of long downtrodden man Glory o to Mount Leinster's own darling and pride Dauntless Kelly, the boy from Calan Dauntless Kelly, the boy from Calan John Kelly, the boy from Thank you very much. It's a lovely, powerful song. You know, um, I'm not sure if I, when we were here last time I mentioned this, but I was here for the 1982 World's Fair. I think it's, is it which way? It's not that far from here, right? They, yeah, and it, and it was great. I was here, I was supposed to come for a week and ended up staying two months. And I was, uh, I was with the, uh, our dear buddy and my mentor, Mick Maloney. And, uh, you know, and of course, you would have known Mick. 
and uh, he just passed away last year, unfortunately. And so, you know, it, it was great because, as Mick said, we were there as the, the Irish music represented the cultural antecedent to uh, old-timey bluegrass and all the various uh, old, old American musics based out of Western Europe. And um, we were part of the Stokely Van Camp, uh, was it Appalachian Center? Or, I forget what it was anyway. But there was Gatorade, I remember that, or something like that. And beans, there were beans, there were a lot of beans. But the best... But, the, but the, best, the best part was that we got to meet a, a man by the name of Hamper McBee from Mount Eagle, Tennessee, and Hamper just passed away a few years ago. And Hamper is and was, excuse me, was a, uh, was a moonshiner. And uh, so they actually hired uh, Hamper to make moonshine, got a license from the state and everything. Like The only thing he had to do was dispose of it properly every day. He going to make a small batch. They didn't really say how it got disposed of, but it was disposed of, believe me. I suppose the statute of limitations is long gone on that anyway. So there's a, there's a great film that you can actually see uh, about Hamper called Raw Mash. It's, it's on YouTube, but he was a great guy. So we were sitting around in the Smoky Mountain Tap drinking slushy margaritas one day and uh, out of mason jars. It was great. And uh, I'll, we had a bit of a sing-song going, and all of a sudden, Hamper started singing this song about this guy, St. Brandon. I said, who the hell is St. Brandon? And it turns out it was St. Brendan. And so Mick and I were looking at each other, said, we've never heard this song before, because it's always tried to, you know, you're always looking for this, the odd or unique song or tune. And we thought, Gee, we found this, right? It was great. So we learned the song from, uh, from, from um, Hamper. And then a couple of months later, Mick went to record it, so he decided to do a bit of researching. And instead of actually being a song that had been sequestered in the, in, you know, in the hills for, for years, turns out it was a song written by Jimmy Driftwood from, uh, from Arkansas. <laughs> the fellow that wrote, you know, uh, the Battle of New Orleans, the Tennessee Stud, and all these songs. And he used to use, when he was teaching, he used to use songs to actually teach kind of history lessons. So this was a song that he wrote called St. Brendan's Fair Isle, even though I love the way Hamper said it, St. Brandon. So it's a great song, St. Brendan's Fair Isle. And here's a chorus that we'd love for you to sing with us. And it's very, I won't sing it, I won't ruin your ears, but it's very, we sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle. Did I get that right there, Pat? He did. It goes, it goes like this. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle. You want to try it out with me? Yes, everyone. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle. All right, that was pretty bad. Let's try it again. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle. On your own. Say you're live on radio now, so let's sing. We sail, fair isle, we sail for St. Brendan's fair isle. When I was a lad on the Emerald Isle, I heard many stories, both lovely and wild, about the great dragons and monsters that be that swallowed the ships as they sail on the sea. Though I was an artist with canvas and paints We sailed at St. Brendan and his jolly saints We told the good people goodbye for a while We sailed to St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle We sailed to St. Brendan's Fair Isle Well, we've been on the ocean for 94 days We came to a spot where the seas were ablaze And burning the sailors alive on the sea Then St. Brendan walked on the festering waves He threw all those demons right back to their caves And all of the saints wore a heavenly smile We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle One night while the brethren were lying asleep up came a great dragon from under the deep He thundered and lightened and he made a great din He awakened St. Brendan and his jolly man The dragon came on with his mouth open 
wide We threw in a cross And a great dragon died We skinned and we cooked And we feasted a while We sailed for St. Brendan's Day Ride for a We sailed for St. Brendan's Day Shore and we walked on the strand. We took our longboats, we killed a zebu, we roasted it up, we had hot barbecue. Then after a while, we were singing a song. We noticed the island was moving along. We ate, we drank, we rode in our style. We sailed for St. Brendan's Fair Isle, Fair Isle. We sailed for St. Brendan's. St. Brendan, this is much to my wish. We ride on the back of the world's biggest fish. Hold tight to them ropes that's dragging the ship. We'll need them someday if this fish takes a dip. We sail every ocean, we sail every sea. We sail every spot that a sailor could see. In 44 days, we sail 10 million miles. We sail for St. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's Pahola here with us today on the Big Plate Live from Barley's. We're going to get one last tune from them, but y'all, we want to invite everybody back again. Uh, tomorrow we'll be at the Knoxville Visitor Center. I visit Knoxville with uh, Common Man and the Trolls of Amsterdam. On uh, next Friday's Big Plate, we'll be right back here inside of Barley's with Jordan Folly and the Wheelhouse. You can always visit our website at wdvx.com to find out who's headed this way. And we are, always have a donation box at that front door if you like what we do. A little love in the box keeps the good music going, you know. Um, As they say in Chicago, keep sending the money. Keep sending it. Always. So, um, yeah, uh, there's a love book here, right here. Speaking of sending money and merch available right over there at the table. Later this evening, 8 o'clock tonight, uh, right up the street, they'll be performing at the Old City Performing Arts Center, treadnox.com for tickets and reservations. Tickets also available at the door there tonight as well. Jimmy Keen, K-E-A-N-E.com is the, no, I didn't do it right. Treadnox on Facebook or, oh, uh, what is it? I, it's on your website. I looked oh, at it. Okay. It's there. It's there. He doesn't know it's there, but it's there. That's well, you can't believe everything you hear on the or read on the internet. You know that. Right? Okay. <laughs> I think what that's Jimmy's what telling us that's is what don't President trust Lincoln said, his website. Right? So yeah, go to just go to tradnox.com for more information. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much, Red. Thank you, both of you. Thank you very much. I mean, I, I guess you get up the crack of dawn to play music all the time in oh, Chicago, yes. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's usually getting home at the crack of dawn. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for being here with us today, guys. Will you leave us with one last tune? We will, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. This is a tune that our great friend uh, Liz Carroll recently composed. It's one of my favorite at the moment. It's called Brandon, not Brendan, but Brandon Cahill, and, uh, and followed by a couple of reels. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. 
much. Thank you. Bahola, y'all. Thank you and join us again next time for more real live music on the big plate live from Barley's.